Hello, my name is Mark Chinesk. I'm Senior Application Engineer with Silo Design Solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom line label using uh, Civil 3D expressions to label a line by its X and Y components. This is particularly useful if you're trying to show an offset to, let's say, a found boundary point by a calculated point and want to label its northeast or southwest or southeast components. So I'm going to show you how to do that. In this drawing right now, I just have a line. Um, I've labeled the start, so I've drawn the line in this direction. It starts here where the blue circle is and moves up to the red hatch circle. I've got a standard Civil 3D line label already in place. I've exaggerated this a little bit. It's about 5.8 feet off. So I'm going to make a new custom label where I want to label this by its X component and its Y component. Before I do that, the first thing I need to do is determine what kind of label this is. So I'm going to go into my settings tab of my tool space. Line labels, particular on not parcel labels, are in the general section under multi-purpose label styles. Down here you can see we have particular line labels which case I'm using this distance only label. Let me pull this out a little more so you can see it. In order to label this as a component, I'm gonna to have to strip that data out. If I look at a line by selecting it here in my properties window, you can see some of the properties I have are start X, start Y, end X, and end Y, okay? So I'm gonna use the algebraic differences among these values to create my individual components. Now to pull those out, I'm going to use a particular object in Civil 3D for labels called expressions. Each type of label for each type of Civil 3D object would have in its label styles these expression areas, depending on where you're at. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make sure I'm under the line section of my general multipurpose Come down here and find the expressions. You can see there's already one in there. This is for use as an example in other drawings. We're going to go ahead and create our own. I'm going to create two expressions here. To create an expression, you would click and highlight the expressions in the tool space settings view. Right click and say new. Okay, this is the expressions dialog. First, we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this X component. I can add a description if I wanted to in here. And this is the area where I can add an expression. So an expression could be any kind of mathematical or algebraic function using numbers, logic symbols, functions, and special properties that come from objects. In this case, these are properties that are inherent in a linear or curvilinear segment, including things like segments start X, start Y, and X and NY, and those are the items we're gonna see. So to break this up by its X component, I'm gonna make a new expression. I'm gonna pull from my properties list and say general segment end X minus, I'm gonna use the operator minus, and then general segment start X. This will give me a value back as a double. You can see I can format the result as a variety of different ways. A double is just a standard decimal, multi-decimal place number. So it's going to take the general segment end minus the uh, start and bring that result back as a double. I'll click OK and you can see that expression has been added. I'm going to make another one for the Y component here. New. I'll call this Y component. And again, I'm going to create an expression here. This time it's going to be the general end Y minus the general start y. I'm not gonna worry about positive or negative right now. We'll take care of that in the actual label style. Again, click okay. So now I have these two components. The thing about expressions and creating them is they become new properties that I can turn right around and make a label. So let's go ahead and make a new label style. I'm gonna come here up to the line, right click and say new. Okay, and we're going to call this a line offset label. Okay, in the general label composer, I'm going to compose this like I would any other label. In the general tab, I can choose a, a layer. Maybe I'm going to put this on C annotation. I'm going to use the standard text style. 
Um, I usually flip my readability bias to 91 degrees, but in this case, I'm going to make a horizontal label so it really won't matter. In the layout, you can see I have several components here already. I'm going to delete the components that I don't need, and I'm just going to start with one. In this direction arrow, I'm actually going to delete that, and I'm going to add a new component here. This one is going to be my X component. Okay. I'm going to anchor it to the feature. I'm going to anchor it by its, let's say we're going to anchor it to the label location. And the text is going to be, let's change this. We're going to change this to the top center. So it's below the label. Um, and we're going to say text height, or sorry, text component under contents instead of label text. I'm going to highlight and delete that in the composer. Now, if I pull in my properties, you can see there's that X and Y component. Those expressions are now available to me to pull from. So this is the X component. I'm going to pull the X component. I want it to be two decimal places. And I'm going to push that over and say, OK. Now I'm going to create a new component. And I'm going to call this the Y component. Now I could tie this as an anchor point to the bottom left, to the X component so that the two of them stay together like this. But I'm going to choose to also tie this to the feature, but I'm gonna put a little extra offset and I'm gonna show you why I do this here in a moment. So I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna go back to the feature. So there's gonna be independent component to the feature, okay, by its top center, just like the other one. And then I'm going to say this is going to be the label text Y component to two decimal places. I'm going to drop the sign at this time. Push that over. Actually, let's keep the sign, keep the sign as, as it is normal. Okay. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to put a Y offset of minus 0 0.0833. We'll drop it down, maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe we need a minus 0.125. There we go. We'll get a little drop on that so it comes down and hit apply. And okay. So now I have my new label style. Let's go ahead and add that to it. So I'm going to go here to add, do the annotate, add label. This is going to be a line label. Uh, single segment and we're going to use my new line offset label. I'm going to add this to this line. Hey, there we go. So we got that. So the X is 5.35, the Y is 2.35. And if I grip edit this label, you could see it is going to change. Now I'm sec X and Y, X and Y, and X and Y. So that was easy enough to do. But what if we wanted to make this a four component label? What if we wanted to do a northeast or a northwest or a southeast or southwest? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to add some additional components. So let's go back here. I'm going to edit this label. I'm going to add two more components. I have the Y X component and the Y component already. Let's re-label this X component. Let's label this east. Okay. And let's take the Y component and we'll label this north. Okay. Now I'm going to label that, change this. I'm going to edit the contents on here and I'm going to type in north and I'm going to put a little foot mark at the end of it. And so there's no confusion. I'm not worried about positive or not a negative. I'm going to take the sign component of my properties and change that to drop sign. This in effect gives me an absolute value. I'll push those across using my arrow and click OK. And then the east component, I'll change that. And that's going to be east. And again, this will be drop sign. Push that over and I'll put a little footmark after it. And I'll swap these around a little bit. I'll take the east component and I'll drop that by minus 0.125. And I'll go to the north component and put that back to zero. That way the north is above the east. Okay, I'm going to click OK. So 
So now I got a northeast component, which is great as long as I'm going to the north and east. But if I go to the south and east, well, that says north still. Now I got to make a new component to change that. So bear with me. I'm going to make a carbon copy of this. I'm going to make a south and I'm going to make a west. So I'm going to go back to my label offsets here and I'm going to take this east. Okay. And I'm going to copy that component. And this time it's going to be west. And I'm just going to edit this and change that to west. Okay. And I'm going to go to the north component. I'm going to use this to copy that. I'm going to call that south. I'm going to edit the label to change that label to south. Now we've got double the fun here. I've got a south, north, east, west. The final tool is to add four more expressions. Now this is interesting because I want to show you something here in the label style. When you're setting up your layout here, if you notice when you come to text height, I have a standard text height here of 0 0.100 inches. But did you know you could specify a value for that text height from an expression? So what if I made some expressions that checked whether or not a value was positive or negative? And if it was positive, set the other value to zero. But if it's negative, set that value to zero. Let's take a look and see what we can do here. I'm going to cancel this, click OK and get out of this. I'm going to make four more expressions. I'm going to say new. This will be called north size. The expression is going to be if, and by the way, my new X and Y components now become parameters that I can put into an expression. So I can have other expressions based on expressions that I already calculated. So for the north size, I'm going to say, I'm going to use an expression here, if. If goes if test expression is true, use a number, else use another value. Okay. So what I'm going to say here is if the Y component is greater than equal to zero. So if it's positive, set the value to 0 0.100 inches. Okay. But this expression uses feet. So I have to use divided by 12 if I want to bring that back to inches. So this will test that. If the Y component is greater than equal zero, return a value of 0 0.100 divided by 12, else, put another comma, return a value of zero. So that's the expression. If the Y component is greater than equal zero, bring me this value. Otherwise, if that's false, give me this other value of zero. Okay? And format that as a double. And I'm going to do that for the other four directions too. For south size, I got to go to the opposite. Again, it's going to be an if the Y component is less than zero. So if it's a negative number, if it's on the bottom end of the quadrant, then return a value of 1 point, or 0 0.10 divided by 12, else zero. And I'll do the same thing with the east and west. So two more east size. Expression is if the X component is greater than equal to zero, 0 0.10 divided by 12, else zero. And I say greater than equal on these two because there have to ha I have to have some case in case the value is exactly zero, but I can't have it twice. The last one here will be west size. And again, it will be if, uh, that's going to give me problems here. Oops, let me try that again. New west size expression. If the X component is less than zero, then 0 0.10, oops, that's what happens when you type that. Uh, 0 
one zero divided by 12, otherwise zero. All right, so keep your expressions in line, kind of write these out, figure out what you need your expressions to be their logic circles ahead of time. So now I've got a X and Y component and a north size, south size, east size, and west size. Let's go back to our final label here. So under edit, I'm gonna come under here under the east, and I'm gonna set the text height to be the east size. Under north, I'm gonna set the text height to be north size. Under west, I'm gonna set the text height to be west size. And finally, under south, the text component is gonna be south size. So basically, it's gonna test it. If the value is greater than zero in the north, the north size is gonna be that 0 0.10 inches, and the south will disappear. It's gonna to shoot to zero. So it's gonna be an on off switch. I'm gonna hit apply. And there you can see, I'm gonna move this start component out of the way. So you can see now because we are in the north and the east direction, I'm seeing north component and the east component. If I grip edit this line and pull it to the south, the north should disappear and be replaced by south and east. The same thing with coming back this way, it should say south and west and north and west. The only thing I have to do here is I have a couple items that I have to switch when it comes to values, or the ones on the top or the bottom, but we can easily work that out. But that's it. Uh, it's always going to be a, 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 a value that you put in here, and you can actually change this to be a drag state. So I'm gonna go back through and edit my component one last time. Um, I'm going to say drag state. Um, I'm not going to show a leader for this particular item, and it's going to be uh, as composed. Okay, so that way, if I draw this out, actually, no, it should be. I should be able to say. Let me double check this. I think if I say stacked text, let's see if that works. Oops, I grab the actual leader. Nope. See, so stack text will pull everything in there. It's got to be as composed. Uh, otherwise, it sets, when you use stack text, it sets all the text heights to one size. So we're going to say as composed. There we go, and we can pull that off. We could other, uh, change other values of these uh, components as well. Uh, back in the layout, I can set these all to rotation angle. Um, under general, I can say flip anchors or plan readability. Orientation reference, I can just say view, okay? Under the general tab. So it's always going to be just, you know, you're going to pull this label up and you can draw this to the side. If I need to add a standard arrow, or I could do that. Um, so that's that's the way it is. I can also come back here and say edit and, and add a, a arrow or something like that that comes from that point. So that's it. That's a, a one way you can make custom labels using Civil 3D expressions. Um, if you have any questions on this, you can please email me at mshinesk at siler-ds.com. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our blog at www.siler-ds.com forward slash blog for more tips and tricks. I know it's a little long video. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get some uh, value of this. Thank you very much and have a good day.